now over to our next speaker. Uh, he's here to share his view on the importance of partnerships between uh, the industry and academia, and also Ericsson's 5G strategy um, being sort of one of the most important technical platforms for the future. Uh, welcome the CTO of Ericsson, Erik Ekoden. Thank you, Paulina. And, um what a day this is for Sweden. It's um, amazing, of course, and uh, it's about time, I think, that we have this digital futures inaugurated. And we already heard from Kalle, of course, and Marina, and I think Anna it really did a good job also in talking about <coughs> the future needs, so the needs that we have to fulfill. Um, but let's uh, look a little bit at uh, the big picture where Sweden is right now. We are in a good position when it comes to digitalization, but if we look at the history, it's really a history of strong focus on research and knowledge. Uh, and we are, of course, very familiar with Sweden as a uh, sort of leader, and it has a heritage in the form of researchers, discoveries, innovations, and inventions. Uh, but as this nation, we have invested in education, research, and development, and we have this culture that we've talked about several times of collaboration. And this is something that goes across industry. I think we have good examples of that. We are showing what we are doing together with ABB over in one of the demos. And this really um, shows that industry needs to leverage each other going forward. But it's also very much about Sweden as a collaboration between uh, industry, uh, between governments and academia. Sweden is also a nation made out of curious and tech-savvy people who are more willing, I would say, to adopt new technologies. And this is something that we can leverage. And if we combine that with our leader leadership and the, leader, um, the leading universities and technical institutes that we have, we are really well placed to continue to lead when it comes to, to research. I'd say that we live in an increasingly knowledge-based economy where these uh, changes that, that we are going to drive is so dependent on the greatest talent. Talent is key. And in fact, that's actually the most important factor. So to further strengthening research and development, and, and this is where we see that we actually have to sharpen even more the focus on cutting edge technology and the competence that we have developed out of the research. But in order to maintain this role and to also strengthen the successes in, in new areas, we have to drive for competitiveness and competitiveness as a nation. I would say that we have to go not only to be the first adopters and the users, we have to continue to be creators of advanced products and technologies. So that's why we need a high level of expertise in cutting edge areas, and I'll main mention a few of them. Um, software technology in general, I would say radio technology, very important for Ericsson, but also computer science, the algorithms, security encryption, AI we talked about several times today, and more broadly in mathematics. And this is, of course, at the core of digital futures, where we can enable and have an environment for scientific excellence, which is really focusing on the societal benefits. So the future is bright, I'd say, and Sweden is ranked top. We heard that already earlier when it comes to most innovative countries. But there are several reasons for that. Uh, only one of them is the strong lead that we have in mobile technologies, the leadership that we have, the worldwide leadership in mobile technologies. But we can leverage that even further. So by building on 5G, we talked about it as a platform for innovation for many other industries to innovate on, and also exploring new areas where we work together with other leading Swedish companies, we can actually define the future manufacturing as, as you may be able to see in the demo where we have 5G enabled robots. Or uh, the example, for example, of industry self-driving, uh, industrial self-driving vehicles really creating efficiency in, in factories. Another form is really to, to look at different flow uh, in the logistics chain. So the work that Einride is doing together with DB Schenker and Telia is really a good uh, example of this collaboration for smarter logistics. There you would get 60% lower costs and 90% lower CO2 emissions. And we've gone into that a few times before. You need this underlying digital infrastructure to be able to get the benefits both on the cost side and the human side, but also very much when it comes to the environment. Being able to use 5G to reduce emissions in all other sectors is really one of the key enablers. So these uh, collaborations are 
what Digital Futures is about. It's about fostering this and collaborating even closer across the industry sectors. And uh, I would say that that's well on the way by, by this program. A thought on exponential innovation. What does exponential innovation mean? Well, I would say we have a great example already in the phenomenal development in the mobile industry itself. But perhaps even more important is to look at the accelerated development in other sectors, which is a result of this fastest growest technology that we've had ever, the mobile technology. Uh, today we have almost 8 billion mobile subscriptions globally. And if you look at the coming 10 years, we will basically connect everyone on Earth using mobile technology. And that promotes, of course, social and economical inclusion. So over these past 30 years, this has been an extreme transition. It's been an in incredible change in terms of innovation across society. And what we're doing now with 5G is really to enable this for enterprises, not only for consumers. Digitalizing industries, developing smart cities, creating new services, and being this platform for open collaboration and innovating in an ecosystem. So, what uh, can you expect in the coming years? Well, the researchers that we have had working on this since 10 years, they are now taking the next step into beyond 5G. But very soon, we will all be carrying this technology in our pockets. You would maybe replace your analog glasses with a future 5G-enabled glasses, or, of course, many more things that are supported by this advanced digital infrastructure. And uh, this means that exponential innovation, it comes really from this cross-disciplinary research in the combination with new areas, such as the AI area, the smart materials area, new computing paradigms already taking us to the neuromorphic and, and quantum compute, and it's about sensor technology and robotization. All of this will actually result in breakthrough ideas, breakthrough services for humanity going forward. In Ericsson, we see R&D not as a cost, but as an investment, and it's a true value creator and something that drives this exponential innovation. So our collaboration here then with Digital Futures will build on this and further strengthen, I would say, Sweden's competitiveness as a nation and also pioneer this combination, which is so important, of the physical plus digital or the new mixed mode future. So with that, really great to be part of this. Thank you. Thank you, Eric. Do you have time for some questions? Absolutely, Paulina. Good. So I'm, I'm really curious about this competence aspect of it. As you mentioned, and as, as people mention all the time, there is a huge lack of engineers. Mm. Uh, what type of measures and sort of initiatives would you like to see, or do you believe in when it comes to encouraging people to become engineers and actually get, get involved in what you do? Well, I think we, we should be very grateful right now because there is a huge momentum in our field right now. I think we see many that are interested in, in really uh, sort of studying uh, technology from the, the core, knowing what happens with, of course, the new fields that you see in uh, artificial intelligence, in the gaming field. There are so many areas that are just mind-boggling. So I think that there is a curiosity, there is a need for coming from, from the young, young generation. But I think we need to, of course, realize that we can't be best at everything. So as a sort of society, as a nation, we have to make sure that there are paths to build on our strengths in education and making sure that they are really uh, top-notch, that they are world-leading going forward as well. Yeah. What we're seeing globally is that the big tech companies are starting their own sort of collaborations with universities or even initiating their own programs to sort of make sure that they get the people they need. Mm. Is that something that you're looking into as well? Well, we have a big reskilling activities where we work together with universities around the world. So there is a very close connection to, to the established universities when it comes to that. We have not uh, gone out that far to create our own education for uh, people outside of, of the company, but I think that uh, the way that we're working very much with uh, open labs and trying to include the technology in uh, sort of nationwide test beds, the way that we open it up for students and for others to really innovate on top of that, we believe that is a way to really foster creativity on top of uh, capabilities that we can help provide, but also to uh, spur this innovation. I would say that if we would should give ourselves a big challenge as a nation is really about taking this to the next step, to, to look at Sweden as a playground, or perhaps the Nordics as a playground where we can really explore the new uh, activities, both with digital futures and, and I would say beyond that. Because with that in place, 
you would see a lot of innovation coming up and you would see a lot of interest, I think, that would be coming back into technology, coming back into digital. Great. One last thing. Mm. You mentioned that you're, you're actually having a demo here. Mm. So for those who are considering actually attending your demo uh, after this speaker yeah. program, what is it going to be about? Uh, there are several, actually. Is oh, there, several. Yeah, there are a few. Mm. There is one which is very much about um, how it's going to look in the coming years, 2025 to 2030. And then you can explore journeys and things like Internet of Senses. What does it mean when you have smell and taste and other things complementing uh, sort of sight and, and, and hearing right now. I think that's really exciting. But the thing that Matilda talked about is really an example where we work together with ABB on robotics and 5G and AI. So instead of having all the intelligence in the robots, you actually move some of the intelligence out of the robots, put it in a local cloud perhaps, connect it over 5G, and then you can control and, and you can configure uh, sites, manufacturing sites over distance. So that's a way to get efficiency, but more importantly, to get the flexibility. And then you could actually scribble your own name or something else on a on a sort of um, an iPad there, I think it is, and, and then the robot over 5G will just draw that for you. So have a look at that. Yeah, super exciting. Thank you so much, Eric, for Thank joining you. us. Thanks.